Tom here. Uh, today I want to go over something that comes up on the forum a lot, and that's, hey, my Royale is leaking. So I'm going to go over a color, uh, tear down and leak fix, and then a reassembly for you. So first thing we got to do is take the stock off, take the scope off, take the magazine out. Uh, this one supposedly has a couple of pellets in there, so i got to be careful about that. It's on safety. Um, real quick, to go over this, um, you'll see you'll, the hissing is coming out of here. That's how I know um, we woke up in the morning and found it at zero bar, and the hissing is coming out the bottom. I'll show you how to figure out if you have a regulated Royale or not. If you've got a steel bottle or an aluminum bottle on your Royale, it's 50-50. You might be regulated, you might not. I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Okay guys, so here's your stock removal bolt. Uh, it takes a 4 millimeter Allen wrench. This one's loose already. Now when you go to remove your stock from your uh, rifle, you want to be very careful that you don't bugger up uh, your, your gauge there. So you want to be very gentle about it. I find it easiest to set it up like so and then just gentle ginger until it comes out. All right guys, so right in here on the back side of your gauge is this little tiny hole. If you have that, chances are very good you have a regulator. If you don't have a regulator and you have that hole, then you have a gun that leaks all the time. Okay guys, after you got your uh, stock off, let's remove the bottle. Now this one doesn't have any this one doesn't have any air in it, so I'm not worried about it leaking out. No residual. So what you're left with here is your breech, you got your fill port here, you got your bottle screw on part there, and next tool you're going to need is a 9 16 wrench, and you're going to loosen up your fill port. Loosen it up almost all the way. And turn the gun over when you get to the end because otherwise your fill port plunger this little guy will fall out on you and you don't want it running away oh I forgot to mention make sure your bench top is clean um, maybe even put your parts on a paper towel as you go along that way you kind of keep things in order um, I'm going to go ahead and take the stock off like I said I would and get back to you in just a minute okay guys I removed the uh, scope and the magazine. Now we were sus suspecting that there might have been pellets in here, so I'm going to go ahead and check that with a dowel. A wooden dowel is that's going to be your best bet. Insert from the muzzle end and just gently, just this is just a check. And it turns out there's no pellets in there, so that's great. If you did have pellets in there, I'll go over that uh, later on in the video how to clear those out. Same thing, use a wooden dowel. If you've got a 22, um, this is a 3 16 wooden dowel. If you got a 25, then get something a little bit bigger. So now that we're down to this part, we are going to unscrew the bottle port here. I'll put this here so you guys can see a little better. Um, I wrapped some electrical tape around my wrench so I don't mar this up. set it in place and you'd be surprised sometimes these are not tight at all just snug enough to um, compress the o-ring and get your fill port in line with the stock and unscrew that set it aside okay inside here I'll give you a close-up is your regulator okay guys so at this point stop what you're doing Put on some clean gloves, like some medical gloves. Harbor Freight's your friend for getting a box of these. They're real cheap. And this is going to keep everything inside here nice and clean. Uh, next thing you want to do, same thing I did with the uh, crescent wrench. Wrap it in some tape. See this little guy here? That's your regulator. That's the end of it. Give it a grab and give it a tug. And there's your regulator. Now, if you've got a leak, Chances are good that, that one of these O-rings, in fact, I can see it already right there. Um, that's the damaged O-ring. 
Um, chances are good that it's one of these O-rings that's leaking on you. So what you're going to want to do is replace those. You can call AOA. They've got, um, they can set you up with a whole new set of, of your outside rings, which really is just these two. That's really the only ones you need to worry about. So we'll get that replaced and we'll get on to removing the barrel next. Okay guys, so now we're going to remove the um, barrel. You've got these three set screws right here. This one is a three millimeter. It should be in there pretty tight. Now you want to be careful when you do this. Move nice and slow with everything because hiding underneath this is your basically your return to home point. If you look deep inside here, you'll see a little divot and uh, in the brass, you'll see this little divot and this little circle. You want to make sure to line this up exactly as it come as it is right now before you remove the barrel. Um, take note of that. In fact, uh, if you want, take a picture. Next two to remove are these two forward ones. This is going to be a two and a half millimeter Allen wrench. Okay guys, now you can gently slide your barrel out. Now you can clearly see that circle and that divot that I was talking about. If you had um, a pellet lodged inside your barrel, this would be a good time to take your, your rod and, and uh, clear that barrel out. Also, if you need to, if you need to replace your breech o-ring, this little guy in here, uh, it's a good time to do that as well if, if that's causing you issues. This will make it a lot easier than dealing with the breech of the, of the rifle itself. You've also got two other O-rings right here and right here. It's a good time to inspect those. And all this goo on here, it's a form of silicone grease, uh, diver's grease. So it's handy to have a little bit just to smear on there during reassembly. But since we're in disassembly, I'm going to go ahead and wipe it all off so I can inspect everything a little better. And there we go. There's your transfer port on the bottom. All right, guys, here's your regulator. I haven't changed the O-rings out yet. I'll be doing that in a second. I wanted to show you real quick how to adjust your regulator pressure. Um, these are your Bellevue washers. And if you wanted to say increase your regulator pressure by like five bar. Uh, take a three millimeter Allen key, insert there, and take a 10 millimeter wrench and you can turn this. Now if you tighten it, your pressure is going to go up and if you loosen it, it'll go down. And that's it. A little tiny bit will make a big difference in your regulator pressure. I'm going to leave this one alone. It's pretty happy where it is. So let's go ahead and um, take out this bad O-ring. You can see, I'm using a dental pick. I got it off of Amazon. You can see that damage pretty easy there. So I'll just rip that guy off. And since we're in here, do both of them. That way you don't have to come in again. Now I'll go find my regulator O-rings and install. Like I said, just inspect while you're in here and keep everything clean. So I got some fresh O-rings here. I'll just stretch them on there till they pop into place. Just roll them, which can be sometimes difficult. If you're going to use a tool to maybe roll them over an edge, make sure you got a blunt tip on there. You don't want anything overly sharp. And once you get it started, it'll roll right into place. And now is the good time to use some silicone diver's grease. You don't need to goop it on and kind of avoid getting it in the hole if you can. It's not the end of the world if you get it in there, but it's just a good practice. 
And now that you've got this grease on here, you've got yourself a dust collector. So you want to be very careful with it to not get it all mucked up during the reassembly process. So here's your fill port and your plunger. If you have a leak and it's coming out your fill port, chances are pretty good this little um, o-ring in the middle here is has gone bad. This one's in good shape. I'll put a thin coat of uh, silicone divers grease on it, put it back in there, and she'll be ready to rock. Okay guys, it's reassembly time. Here's your regulator. You want to see this little brass piece pointed this way. Okay, so the bolt goes in first. Doesn't matter where this little hole is, it's going to bleed air out like it should, uh, no matter where it is. Push it in all the way, you don't have to use force, and that is installed. Now your bottle, um, your bottle adapter, we'll screw that on. And you want these threads on the bottom. And see, that's where I'm bottoming out. It's okay to come back and line it up with the gauge. Now we can take our fill probe, put that in place. And just wrench it snug. You don't have to kill it, guys. And there we go. We'll put our barrel back in next. Forgot to put a little bit of diver's grease on there, so there we go. A thin coat of diver's grease is going to help you just maintain a good seal and keep your shots a little bit consistent. Remember what I said? I got to line up this hole perfect because what it's doing is it's aligning your transfer port. And sometimes it'll help to get the right depth. If you've got your magazine, you can slide it in, push that barrel against it, put your safety on, push that barrel against it, and then check again for your alignment. And if everything looks good, send it home with that three millimeter Allen screw. Okay guys, once you get this snug down, you do want to tighten this down. Again, don't kill it, but do you, you do want it fairly tight. And then run these other guys down as well. Now remember, these are the two and a half millimeter. This is the three millimeter. Same thing with these, you want to tighten them down. This could change your point of impact, your zero. So you, you may want to re-zero um, re your scope straight away. Don't count on it being in the exact same spot. It should be, but there is a good chance that it won't be. Wipe out any goo left over. And that should be it. You can see how loose this is, but it's still going to hold the pressure. It's a big old fat O-ring in there. At this point, it's a good time to Screw the bottle back on and do a little leak test. Because um, otherwise you'll get the stock all back on there and put together and then you got to take everything down and apart again. Again, make sure you're, um, you've got nothing in the chamber and your weapon is on safe. Leader valve. Okay, now before when I would fill this up at all and this gauge would come off zero at all, it would leak out that little hole. Now it's now everything is holding pressure. So fill slowly. Now that says 215 bar, but it's actually 220. Now I've got no leaks. So now I can put my uh, stock back on, scope back on, zero out, and I'm ready to shoot. 
So let's put our stock back on. But you want to be real careful again with this gauge. Um, they can be real easy to break. And as you push this down, make sure everything looks pretty lined up. If that's not perfectly aligned, it's okay. Uh, take your bottle off and this will move around a little bit and you can get it centered just right. And now just put your screw in, tighten it down, and hit the range. Well guys, I hope this helped out some of you with your Royale. If it has any issues, um, like leaks or anything like that, or you just want to play with your regulator, um, take your time, do things slow. I know I ran through this, but I've done it quite a few times. Um, so just pause and watch a little piece of video and then <laughs> keep going with it. Um, as always, happy shooting. Can you take a peek in that and see if I'm cutting off my head? Cutting off what? My head. On top of the frame. No, you're in the in the picture completely. Okay.